Hello friends, with this video we are going to start a new subject that is operations research and in operations research we are starting with linear programming, a very wide subject. In linear programming, first we are going to start a series of the video lectures on formulation of linear programming problem. How to formulate a linear programming problem from a real life problem or a managerial problem? We have some alphanumeric data, say some explanations and some statistical data regarding any case and we want to formulate a linear programming problem because to solve any real life or managerial problem through operations research or linear programming, first we have to formulate a linear programming problem. That means we need to convert the real life problem into a mathematical format. Then only we can solve it. In this lecture we are going to discuss a few required steps. Steps for formulating or steps to formulate an LPP or linear programming problem. In this conversion first we need to do is determining the decision variables. How many decision variables are there in the problem and which are the decision variables? For example, if we have a factory and we are producing two products X and Y using same raw material and same labor, same machinery in different proportions and our problem is how many units of X and Y should be produced to get maximum profit. This is our real life or managerial problem. In this problem, our ultimate goal is maximization of profit that we'll, we discuss at the time of objective. But what about decision variables in our small example? See exactly what we are going to find. How many units of X and Y should be produced to get maximum profit? That means everything is dependent on R, X and Y how many units of x and y that means the quantity of x and y becomes decision variables or simply say x and y are decision variables so in this case there are two decision variables x and y the quantity can be assumed x1 for x y x1 number of units for x y x and x2 number of units for y and so on which x and y or quantities of x and y are our decision variable. So first we have to recognize or determine the decision variables from the problem. Then the most important thing, what is our objective? In our example, the objective is to maximize profit. The objective can be maximization or minimization, maximization of profit or revenue, or say margin or contribution margin, number of viewers in case of advertising problem, return in case of financial problem and there can be many more. In case of minimization, the foremost is cost, time, number of employees in case of HR problem. Now the objective is first recognized then a function of objective is to be determined. What is the function? That is C1X1 plus C2X2 plus so on and CNXN. What is this C? C represents the per unit amount of the objective factor. If it is profit, C is profit. If it is revenue, C represents revenue. If it is contribution margin, C represents contribution margin. If it is number of viewers, C represents number of viewers. Similarly, C represents cost or time, whatever the name. So C is a term which we use to represent the unit of objective. After determining the very decision variables and objective, the main thing is this objective is to be achieved by producing or providing or selling these variables. 
but there are some restrictions there are some limitations which are popularly known as constraints in the case of linear programming here we believe that there are n number of decision variables here we believe that there are m number of constraints normally the constraints are based on the resources which are used for production or earning revenue or whatever the case may be and requirements generally requirements are considered at the time of minimization problem which we will later on discuss the mathematical form of the constraints can be in the form of equality that means equation or inequality the general mathematical form is a11x1 plus a12x2 plus so on a1 and xn because we have n number of decision variables so x represents decision variables a represents the per unit quantity of resource or requirement so multiplication of a and x gives us the total requirement for particular product the constraint can be in the form of inequality with greater than or equal to sign that means minimum requirement or minimum this much requirement is to be satisfied or it can be an inequality in the form of less than or equal to sign that means at the most this much resource is available or it can be in the form of equality in some few cases so on the basis of the number of resources and or requirements the number of inequalities or constraints will be determined as we have assumed that there are m constraints so there must be m inequalities or equalities in the form of constraints and the last part is implicit conditions the most important condition we believe is non negativity that means all the decision variables take only non negative value that means the lowest possible value at when we solve the linear programming problem any decision variable takes the lowest possible value of zero only or positive because we know that in real life when we produce a, any tangible or intangible product its minimum value can be zero it can never be negative but in some other fields the negatives value of decision variable is positive but mostly when we face problems in real life then non negativity condition can be there we write it only if it is necessary if negative value of decision variable is positive in our case then we need not write this condition and similarly in some cases the decision variable should take only integer value many tangible and intangible products are there where the fractional quantity is not possible and when we solve the linear programming problem we have no control on the final optimal solution value of the decision variable that means in final optimal solution the value of the decision variable can be integer or fractional but when we need the value of the decision variable as integer only then we must express the condition of integer in our formulation but in most of the cases we face as student we have not to mention this condition at the time of formulating the linear programming problem only when in real life we solve the linear programming problem from our real life from our organization and when we need the optimal value of the decision variable to be integer then only we need to mention this condition so ultimately we can say that in this four steps we can convert any real life or managerial problem into a linear programming problem Thank you very much.